Good freaking morning everybody. Right, two projects going on today. The first one is going to be set up a storage box for the glycol. And then the second job of the day is going to be roll a piece of steel to put a chimney on the boil kettle. So we're going to use what's left of the sheet metal that we had to make the tanks and then we're going to weld that on and that's a job I can be getting on with while I'm waiting for the expanding foam to set on here because I've done this before. So the plan is we're going to put one of these boxes inside the other and of course if they're not big enough we've got a small diddly one so that definitely will fit. Uh, this one in there and then we've got a 30 litre glycol reservoir to start with. So I've got three boxes. I did try them all in the shop and none of them were very good in terms of fitting in each other. The only ones I've not tried are these two. Yeah, you see it touches on the edges. So what I can do is we can use this as the main reservoir that sits in there in some foam, insulated. So we've got a freezing cold reservoir. Or we make another box out of timber, let's say, and we sit this big one in the timber box. This is an 80 litre reservoir. Still quite small in comparison to what we're going to want, but big enough to handle the job. This one is slightly bigger at 90 litres, but they've got vent holes in the handles, so it sort of means you've lost the top 10 litres. Some of you may recognise this from well over two years ago uh, and it was never meant to be reconditioned. This was heading for the skip um, but being the hoarder that I am I uh, put it to one side and rescued it because I thought I could harvest components off it in the future but it looks like today we're going to try and breathe life back into it. It's basically an old air conditioning unit. The unit's long gone. Uh, the top console has been chopped off, brought back down here. This was a spindle that drove another squirrel fan up here. That's been cut off. I installed cooling to the top to make it cold. I'm so, I'll be surprised if there isn't a gas leak. This is the evaporator. And uh, here is the condenser unit. So this bit has to sit in the glycol and we get some glycol. I have to try and bend this pipe work round. It's been work hardened. I don't really know how I'm going to do it without uh, breaking it if I'm honest. So yeah this is where the rubber really meets the road. You can see where I cut off the original power supply and then we ran the cable across to the new one that I built. And that was bespoke as well. I don't know what's happened to it because it didn't get sold with Idle Valley, so I have a funny feeling it's been stolen. Uh, there's a thousand pounds worth of glycol in that tank as well. But anyway, that's by the by. What we need to do now is attach a new power supply to this bad boy and see if we can fire it up. Oh, it might be a miracle, boys and girls. Woo. Making some funny noises, but it sure does run like a treat. Look at that ice already forming. Might be up to a winner. Right, I'm over the moon that that actually works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just replacing this relay that I installed here 
this takes place of the primary circuit board that would have controlled the whole AC unit when it was a functional AC unit. Uh, but what I'm going to do with these, they're basically eBay knockoff Omeron relays. And what I found on the last lot that I built, these LEDs and the resistor in the top, well the resistor is not correctly rated. So what I've been doing is just snipping it out, pull the LED and resistor out, get a shot of it, you don't actually need it and then that prevents a build up of heat and you can see on this one if I get close up and the camera allows me to focus you'll see that one started to go brown there and also another side note one of the reasons why I'm changing this is because there's some verdigris forming on the contacts there whereas this one is a brand new nice and shiny 240 volt or 220 actually the solder has so these relays are like two or three pounds and this is your first point of failure generally if something goes wrong with anything like this we'll be using these relays on the build to control the motorized valves switch the pump on and everything else for the cooling jackets that'll be another build it'll be quite a build as well i've got lots of these to order god have i been busy bit of a sweat on the old forehead like so this is looking exactly how we want it to look. You can see how we've got it on this base here, lifted up, it looks quite good. So I've tidied the wiring up, I've replaced the electrics where I've needed to replace them. We've got it working. And then over here, I've knocked together a plywood box with a plinth on the inside. And the idea of this plinth is we can totally fill it up with expanding foam get that sat in there this will raise the glycol reservoir off the ground enough for us to insulate the bot for us to insulate the bottom and then we'll also insulate around the edges let the foam cure cut out a little section on the side for the pipe work to drop in build some type of support as well on the side to hold the AC unit and then we'll fill her up and give her a whirl having said that though Jeremy is telling me it's one o'clock so I've pretty much got two hours to get foam in there hopefully set the foam I don't think it will set and then build a support for the side of the container for this bad boy time almost got the box insulated check that out and it's sticking with the help of a fan to blow away ziffoons it's working a treat we've got the IBC being CIP'd check that out so I'll just turn it off now so uh, I'm not leaving it unattended um, and Stu's just finishing off up there woods but yeah it is time to jump in the car and go and get the kids and then I'm coming back down with the little tow rags hello <laughs> so we've arrived back with the stildrums the children Dominic's really taking up all the time he can on the laptop can't see him very well in there because we're on manual mode for some reason so uh Yes, we've got some more foam in, we've got the box in, and you can see I'm starting to fill up the insulation on one side, the drill's just weighing it down, and then all the bits that I've cut out, I've stuffed down this side, and we've got the fan here to blow the fumes out, 
So it sets correctly. And we also have the dog. And we also have the dog. <laughs> Hello dog. Hey, how you doing? So, uh, everybody's here now. Gem's mm. here. This is the little fitting that I've just welded up to allow us to put the, what's well there? Allow us to put the ballcock style thing. Can you see that? Yes, yes. I don't want to brag, but the welding's coming on. So that's to allow me to put a ball cock in there to fill the tank, obviously uh, for brew day, so I don't overflow the HLT. We will put an electronic system in in the future when we've got DOSH, but at the minute everything's analog. And of course here's the box of foam. So we're going to sit, that's a glycol bath, 80 litres we've managed to get. We should be able to drop the chiller unit which is sat there just in this section nicely. But I'm quite pleased, I've got the fan on there to blow the fumes away because the fumes cause a problem in terms of the polyurethane setting. But that's it, we're done I think, we're done. So we're gonna leave Stuart here, painting up there, don't fall off. Otherwise, keep your phone on you, if you do at least you'll be able to ring us, don't land on it. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow.